Jigoro Kanoshiham performs the Koshiki no Kata with Yoshitsugu Yamashita, 10th Dan. The Koshiki no Kata are largely based on the Kata of the Kitoryu of Jujitsu, which Jigoro Kanoshihan studied before founding Kodokan Judo. Jigoro Kanoshihan realized that the Kata of Kitoryu were superior in both theory and technique, and were the most appropriate and effective means of cultivating the right spirit. He therefore introduced them as the Koshiki no Kata. The Koshiki no Kata are based on the Nagewaza or throwing techniques executed by samurai in armor on the battlefield. They consist of 14 omote and 7 ura forms. Let's look at the Koshiki no Kata performed in succession. Notice the overall flow of the Kata. Omote, the first, Tai. The second, Yume no Uchi. The third, Ryokuhi. The fourth, Mizuguruma. The fifth, Mizunagare. The sixth, Hikiyotoshi. The seventh, Kodaore. The eighth, Uchikudaki.
The ninth, Tani Otoshi. The tenth, Kuruma Daore. The eleventh, Shikorodori. The twelfth, Shikorogaishi. The thirteenth, Yudachi. The fourteenth, Takiotoshi. And now let's watch the seven Ura forms. The Ura forms are performed quickly and boldly, demonstrating the essence of attack and defense in Judo. And now let's look at the techniques involved in the kata. To begin, the opponents stand facing front and bar. They then face each other, standing five meters apart, kneel and bow. The kneeling salutation is performed on the assumption that you're wearing armor. It's therefore different from an ordinary bow. Stand with your feet slightly apart, kneel on one leg after the other and bow. Keep the tips of your toes upright on the floor. Rise from the kneeling position, one leg after the other. After bowing, both opponents take one step forward and assume natural fundamental posture. The tori turns right and takes two steps forward. 
Calming his mind, he takes another step forward and assumes natural fundamental posture. The uke approaches the tori's left from behind and begins the first form, tai. The uke grabs the tori's belt with both hands, pulls and tries to throw him. The tori, however, hugs the uke's hips from behind and places his right hand on the uke's left chest to push and break the uke's balance, throwing him over his left knee. Watch the tori's hands. Notice the feet of both opponents. And now let's look at the ukemi. The tori pushes and breaks the uke's balance, throwing him across his left knee. The uke spreads his left leg out wide, brings his right foot towards his left, and avoids the tori's left knee. He then spreads his left leg out again in ukemi. On completing ukemi, the uke's legs are spread out wide. After throwing the uke, the tori opens his left leg to the left and assumes the kurai dori position. And now, let's watch the transition from Tai to the second form, Yume no Uchi. As in the previous technique, Tai, the Tori tries to throw the Uke by pushing and breaking his balance. Using the Uke's resistance to break his balance to the fore, the Tori leans back and throws himself backward. The Tori restrains the Uke's upper body and pushes him back. The uke holds his ground and pushes back. Using the uke's resistance, the tori leans back to break the uke's balance. At the same time, he places his right hand on the uke's upper arm and faces him. Notice how the tori uses his left hand. The tori's feet are on the right-hand side of the uke's feet. Let's look at the action from behind. The uke is thrown diagonally over the tori's body and comes to his feet. Upon throwing the uke, the tori spreads his arms and legs out wide. This nagawaza is called yoko wakare and is a randori waza of kodokan judo.
And now, watch how the second form, Yume no Uchi, is followed by the third, Ryokuhi. The uke tries to grab the front of the tori's belt with both hands. The tori steps back with his right foot and turns his body to the right, pulling the uke towards him. He then places his hands on the uke's shoulders and throws him directly behind. Watch the Tori's hands. Let's look at the action from the other side. In Ryokuhi, the Tori throws the uke in one breath. The tori is on the left-hand side. Watch his right foot carefully. The uke swings his right foot out and strikes the mat with his right hand in ukemi. And now from the third form, Ryokuhi, to the fourth, Mizuguruma. The tori grabs the uke's right hand and tries to throw him forward. Using the uke's resistance, the tori pushes the uke and breaks his balance to the rear. As the uke resists, the tori falls back and throws him over, just as in Yume no Uchi. The tori grabs the uke's wrist and pushes the back of his hand up to his forehead, while at the same time pressing the small of the uke's back and breaking the uke's balance to the rear. Using the uke's resistance, the tori pulls forward and upsets the uke's balance. Notice the feet movement of the tori on the right-hand side. Let's look at the ukemi. The uke slaps the mat with his right hand just above the tori's left shoulder and falls diagonally over the tori in ukemi. And now going from the fourth form, Mizuguruma, to the fifth, Mizunagare.
After finishing Mizuguruma, the Tori and Uke take up the following positions to begin Mizunagare. They stand diagonally about five meters apart. The Uke goes for the Tori's chest with an imaginary dagger. At that very moment, the Tori grabs the Uke's left hand, pulls and throws him. The Uke advances towards the Tori, reaching out with his left hand. The Tori grabs the Uke's wrist with his right hand, thumb on top, and with his left hand pushes the Uke's arm up to break his balance. The Tori grabs the inside of the Uke's upper left arm with his left hand, thumb down, drops to his right knee and throws the Uke by pulling. The uke is holding an imaginary dagger with his right hand. Notice how the tori reverses the hold of his left hand. As soon as the tori grabs the uke's left wrist, he steps back in sugiyashi to pull and break the uke's balance. He then drops to his right knee and throws the uke over. The uke rolls over, sits up and spreads his legs. And now from the fifth form, Mizunagare, to the sixth, Hikiyotoshi. Notice the tori's timing in throwing the uke. The uke grabs for the tori's belt with his right hand. This is when the tori grabs the uke's right arm and throws him. Let's look at the action from a different angle. The tori drops to his left knee and throws the uke by pulling. The uke falls and sits up with his legs spread out. And now from the sixth form, hikiyotoshi, to the seventh, kodaori. The tori attempts to strike the uke's temple. The uke evades the strike and tries to apply a koshinage. The tori presses his right arm against the uke's face, breaks his balance and throws him. The tori moves forward, raising his right arm. He strikes at the uke's temple and attempts to overpower him. The tori presses his right arm against the uke's face and his left hand against the front of the uke's belt. The tori advances in sugiyashi and breaks the uke's balance to the rear. After throwing the uke, the tori moves his right knee out to the right and assumes the kurai dori position. And now from the seventh form, Kodaore, to the eighth, Uchikudaki.
the tori moves towards the uke, aiming at his abdomen. The uke avoids the attack and tries to apply a koshinage, but the tori grabs him from the front, lifts and throws him. The tori moves his left knee out to the left and assumes the kurai dori position. The tori's right hand is pressed against the front of the uke's belt. The uke's body is bent backwards. And now from the eighth form, Uchikudaki, to the ninth, Taniotoshi. The tori and uke take up the following positions to begin taniotoshi. The uke stands about three meters behind the tori to his left. They both stand in natural fundamental posture. The uke tries to push the tori down by pressing his right hand against the tori's right shoulder and left hand against the abdomen. Without resisting, the tori bends forward. He then traps the uke's body, pulls him up and throws him backwards. Watch the tori's right hand. He grabs the fingers of the uke's right hand, thumb down. After throwing the uke, the tori moves his left knee out to the left in kurai dori. And now going from the ninth form, Tani Otoshi, to the tenth, Kuruma Daore. The uke approaches the tori from behind and tries to twist him down with both hands. Without resisting, the tori pivots and faces the uke, pulls him up and by throwing his own body backward, throws the uke over his head. In doing so, the tori does not grab the uke's judogi. He places both hands under the uke's arms, lifts and breaks his balance. The tori pivots on his right foot and stands alongside the uke's right foot. Let's look at that from the other side. The uke flies over the tori's body and performs ukemi. The tori spreads his arms and legs. And now from the tenth form, kurumadori, 
to the 11th Shikorodori. The uke tries to grab the front of the tori's belt with his left hand. The tori grabs the uke's left wrist and pulls down. With his left hand, the tori presses the uke's jaw, upsets his balance and pulls him down with both hands. Let's watch the action again from the other side, focusing on the tori's hands. The main points are pull down the uke's wrist, press his left jaw and break his balance. Watch again from the other side. The uke steps back with his left foot and falls back, striking the mat with both hands. And now going from the 11th form, Shikorodori, to the 12th, Shikorogaishi. The uke grabs the front of the tori's belt and pulls him towards him. The tori takes a big step towards the uke and tries to overpower him by twisting his neck. The uke presses back with his left hand and tries to regain his balance. At that moment, the tori sweeps the uke's left leg with his right leg, puts both hands on the uke's shoulders and pushes him down. The tori pushes the uke's left leg with his right leg in a sweeping motion and pushes him down. The main points in shikorogaishi are twisting the uke's neck, and using the right leg to sweep and push down in one go. And now from Shikorogaishi to the 13th form, Yudachi. The tori grips the uke's lapels with his right hand. The uke steps forward with his left, then right foot and tries to throw the tori by putting his arms around the tori's hips. The tori, however, drops to his left knee and pulls the uke down. This shows how to grab the uke's lapels. Grip both lapels with both hands and then with the right hand, the index finger inserted between the lapels, bring the lapels together. The tori responds by stepping back with his right foot and then throwing the uke. Let's take another look. The moment the uke puts his arm around the tori's left hip in a koshinage, the tori drops to his left knee and pulls the uke down with both hands.
And now, let's look at the transition from the 13th form, Yudachi, to the final Omote form, Taki Otoshi. The uke attempts to grab the back of the tori's belt and throw him, but the tori puts his left arm around the uke's hips and pushes him back to break his balance. Using the uke's resistance, the tori throws himself backwards and throws the uke over him. The tori grabs the uke's lapels, as in yudachi. Watch how the tori grabs the uke's hips and breaks his balance to the rear. When throwing the uke, the tori has both legs positioned on the uke's right. The uke flies diagonally over the tori's body, rolls over and stands. After finishing omote, the tori and uke take up the same positions as in tai to begin ura. Once the uke takes his position, the tori takes a step forward and stands in natural fundamental posture. Let's watch the seven ura forms performed in succession. The tori and uke demonstrate the variations of attack and defense in fluid motion, constantly maintaining a diagonal position. And now let's look at the first ura form, mikudaki. The uke grabs both sides of the tori's belt and tries to apply a koshinage. The tori restrains the uke's left arm and breaks his balance by pushing him back to the left. The uke resists by leaning forward and then the tori throws himself backwards and throws the uke. Watch the tori's hands and how he breaks the uke's balance. Watch the tori on the right. Notice how he throws himself backwards. The tori should keep close to the uke when throwing him. And now from the first ura form, mikudaki, to the second, kurumagaishi.
The uke rushes towards the tori and tries to push his shoulders with both hands. The tori, however, evades him by placing both hands on the uke's arms. He then throws himself backwards and throws the uke. The tori does not grip the uke's judogi. Instead, he places his hands underneath the uke's arms. The tori steps forward with his right foot, then left, to stand on the uke's right. He then throws himself backwards. The uke flies diagonally over the tori, rolls over and stands up. Let's look at the action again. The tori uses the uke's forward momentum to throw him. And now from the second form, Kurumagaishi, to the third, Mizuiri. The tori and uke stand diagonally apart to begin Mizuiri. The most important factor in Mizuiri is the use of the tori's hands. The tori grabs the uke's right wrist from inside with his left hand and evades his thrust and he places his right hand thumb on top underneath the uke's right arm. The tori evades the uke's thrust and pulls him to break his balance. The tori then throws himself backwards and throws the uke. And now going from the third form, Mizuiri, to the fourth, Ryusetsu. The Tori and Uke take up the following positions to begin Ryusetsu. As soon as the Tori and Uke come face to face, the Tori flips his right hand in the Uke's face to distract him. The Uke leans backwards to avoid the feint. Just as he is about to regain his balance, the tori throws himself backwards and throws the uke. The feint used by the tori is called katate kasumi. He bends his wrist down and quickly flips his hand up against the uke's face and grips the uke's lapels. The tori grips the uke's lapels and at the same time steps forward with his left foot then right. The tori places his left hand on the back of the uke's left shoulder, pulls him upward and throws himself backward. And now going from the fourth form, ryusetsu, to the fifth, sako otoshi. The tori and uke take up the following positions for Saka Otoshi. The uke rushes towards the tori and attempts to stab him in the stomach with his left hand. The tori grabs the uke's arm, pulls and throws him over. It's important that the tori stand firmly to pull and throw the uke. As the uke comes rushing forward, the tori grabs the uke's wrist from above with his right hand and places his left hand against the uke's arm. Avoiding the uke's attack, the tori remains standing and firmly pulls the uke's arm to throw him over. The uke rolls over. And now from the fifth form, Saka Otoshi, to the sixth, Yuki Ore. After finishing Saka Otoshi, the tori takes a couple of steps towards the uke and turns his back towards him. The uke attempts to put his arms around the tori from behind. 
the Tori grabs the Uke's right arm, drops to his right knee and throws him over. The Uke places his right foot outside the Tori's right foot and tries to put his arms around him. The Tori raises both arms, grabs the Uke's right arm and throws him. The Uke rolls slightly over. And now from the sixth form, Yuki Ore, to the final Ura form, Iwanami. The Tori flips both hands in the Uke's face to distract him. As soon as the uke looks front again, the tori grabs the uke's lapels, throws himself backwards and throws the uke. A feint using both hands is called ryote kasumi. In ryote kasumi, the tori bends both wrists down and quickly flips both hands into the uke's face. The uke leans backwards to avoid the blow. The moment he looks front again, the tori grabs his lapels, throws himself backwards and throws the uke. The uke flies diagonally over the tori's body, rolls over and stands up. The tori spreads his arms and legs. After finishing Iwanami, the Tori and Uke return to their original positions and face each other, standing in natural fundamental posture. They both step back with their right foot and perform a sitting bow with feet slightly apart. They then stand, face the front and bow to end. It's essential while performing the Koshiki no Kata to imagine yourself wearing heavy armor. It's important to perform the Kata accurately. The Omote forms should be performed solemnly and gracefully, while the Ura forms, which demonstrate the essence of attack and defense in Judo, should be performed quickly and boldly. When these rules are properly observed, the Koshiki no Kata based on the old techniques executed by samurai in armor, become an appropriate training method for today's high-ranking judoists.